get them to you. So we're hoping we're we're just working on the details of all of that, and that's how we intend to do the sale that this year. Um, that is going to be Kim Parker and Kathy Shreve are both taking care of that. For the commercial plan sales, we have a commercial order already for five thousand dollars. I am going to request once I figure out how to do it, two thousand dollars more from you. Um, Nancy, can I count on you to be the native perennial person? I need to talk to that. Okay. Oh well, I better just like. Okay. And then I have Marianne as the rose master. I talked to her last time, and she said she's still there. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, Marianne, yes. I guess I'm not sure how my rose master is. No, well, Marianne, everybody gets Marianne Camilla. Oh, no, I'm, I'm yeah. Sorry. 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 Marianne, what? Who's the different Marianne. Okay. So, sorry, Marianne. yeah, sorry, everybody's a, a, everybody's <laughs> going to be a master or a guru or a. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, expenditure form. Okay. So, I don't want to go into too much detail about the online plant sale, but. Uh, Kathy or and Kim, they are willing to help any interns or people who aren't used to, you know, propagating plants or getting the seeds started. So whatever our needs are going to be, I mean, if we've got 200 plants and we get an order for 300, we are going to need help with the with the planting of the plants. So we, if, if people need education or training or an assessment of their setup at their house, they are willing to do that. And um, so we'll will be further along. So we're going to have a list of the, of the plants that we're going to put out there available. That list will be ready um, coming up here pretty soon. We should be ready to go around the middle of March with the form will be complete. We can go live, launch the, the online sale about the middle of March. And let's see what else. I'm thinking about, I have talked to the 307 Simplicity lady about whether we want to have vendors there or not. Um, I haven't made that decision yet. I'm still talking to her to see what she can offer us. Um, I'm thinking about putting a couple food trucks there or some food vendors so that our volunteers, they'll have um, something to eat. Does anybody have any questions for me? Have you talked to the city about signs? Negative. Is that so? Okay. Who's city? Cheyenne City. Uh, yes, Cheyenne City. Parks, Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec. Oh, the head of Parks and Rec's office is now at the upstairs of the Botanic Gardens, but you can do that. I actually, well, I, 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 I actually know somebody who's kind of up there. So if you have any trouble, let me know and I'll so ask Teresa. Okay, for signage. Yeah. So that's permission for us to put signs up in certain areas. Yeah, Okay, it's the banners. And Rich, I understood okay. from Nancy that you already did new signs and they're in storage. No, they haven't been ordered yet. Banners no. times four, correct? Okay. Maybe I misunderstood from you, sorry. Maybe I'll I'll talk to you offline and then okay. you can anybody else have anything that I've missed? I was just curious on how you're gonna we're gonna are we going to grow plants and then let let somebody know how many we have? Or are we going to grow yeah. the demand? We haven't worked out all of the details yet, but um, but the gals who do most of the, you know, Kathy, they, they they know what they are capable of planting. I can plant 200 plants, but um, yeah, we, we haven't worked out all the details yet, but we're working on them. But what you're saying is, oh, but that's for online. Yeah, so we're she, online. She's we're talking still about propagating and bring to the absolutely. Plant yes. Did and you want to say anything about? Do you have a suggestion of? Have you figured out a suggestion of how many people, how many plants you would like each person to bring? No, there? because we don't know what we need yet. When we don't know what we need yet, so it's we're still, you know, I can talk to you and we can it's get early, the word out. You can make whatever decision you want. I don't, I don't. I just wonder. Yeah, we don't know yet. Anybody else? Hey, Deb. And you said you were having a little trouble with the form for the. Yeah, I filled out the form, but I don't know if that's the right if that's the right thing to do. I don't, have any I don't know either. Do you know? What do you ask? Is I'm warm to increase the budget for that. No, money. that's not the right form. Okay, talk to Peggy <laughs> after the meeting and she'll tell you. I'm thinking it's just a motion. You want to make a motion to oh. increase that. 
because that's when you're asking for money, not asking for budget increase. I would like to make a motion to increase the budget for the commercial plant sales, two thousand more dollars. I second the motion. Oh, 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 Okay, I'll look at that and then I'll I'll just read it oh. and then I'll do what I have to do. So you yeah. say the motion. There's a motion on the floor. I second the motion. Now you say there's been a motion made and seconded that. Is there any discussion? And then we will hold on to that the next year. Yeah. We can't we can't do that yet. We can't do that no, yet. I think the, okay, the next motion at the next, yeah. next meeting. Yeah, right. right. so you are doing whatever. Definitely the person okay, so you keep me in line for the law. Okay. Right. No, right. okay. I did it all wrong. Okay. No, you didn't do it. I, I, I was the wrong. I was so the wrong person. Tasha, there. Should the motion say that she plans on that she plans that she made a motion that or they would like to increase the budget or I get all the motions. Okay. Do it. Then At the first. executive. Yes. We decide, we look at the okay. look at it, okay. see if it makes financial and follows our objectives. Objective, and we will if it passes that, then we forward it to the membership meeting for, for discussion. For discussion and vote. Okay. Thank you all for knowing stuff I don't know. Okay. Hey, hey, Deb, is there anything? By law, policy for the plant says the vice president is your go between between the executive board and you. And to make a report to the executive board when they meet. So I request that you start making your reports to the executive board so we know what you're doing. And I did, I did ask that people to bring their reports tonight. So it might right. be my fault. No, but she, they can do it here, but they need to also report to the executive committee. So they, the executive committee can ask questions and solve these problems before it gets to the membership. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure this out as we go. Thanks. I remember we weren't able to do the executive board. We did, we were not able to do the executive board meeting. Things are a little not out of order when we fix them. Which brings me to you. Are you ready to tell us what you're doing? Sure. Sure. Just a plug for the C library. So the C library, we will have our kickoff on March 5th, 2022. That's a Saturday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m in the Cottonwood Room at the library. Uh, uh, happening a little bit quickly because all of a sudden, several key people looked at their calendars and said, oh, the date that we had picked won't work. So we, we ratcheted it up a few weeks. Who is that? Quite a few weeks. Quite a few weeks because uh, some of the key people are out of the country. Oh my God. And so we thought it would be better there were people here. <laughs> <laughs> what day is that? Saturday, March 5th, in the Cottonwood Room at the County Library from 10 to 1. And so, because it is on such short notice, I don't know if we'll be able to do the stations like we were planning to do in the years past. We, uh, well, we were going to see if Rich wanted to do his, um, his rain gutter garden, but we've We've had up potting stations, just anything that's interesting to members, they come and show to the public, hey, here's how you sow a seed, here's how you up pot a tomato, here's how you do something. Um, some years we've done the little bean necklaces for little kids, 
where you put a little cotton ball, some boys some cotton ball and a bean in there and hang it around their neck, tell them not to hang themselves. And then pretty quick, they've got a bean growing out of their necklace. You know, little fun things for kids. Uh, one time we did um, uh, potatoes where we showed the little kids how to plant a, a potato for just a little, in a little pot to grow a potato in a pot, things like that. Uh, bring your favorite tools, your favorite fertilizers, those kinds of things. But again, since we all of a sudden moved it way, way up, we sort of ran out of planning time. But if anybody's excited about that and wants to get in touch with me or Maggie, not Marie, she's shaking her head. But uh, <laughs> Tasha, are you still playing with the seed library or do you have enough to do? Um, if anybody contacts me at the seed library, I can at least steer them in the right direction. Okay, perfect. But we will have our packeting parties also on a very short timeline too. These are the seeds that we pack it up to give to the library for people to check out. So checking out doesn't mean that they have to return the seeds that they check out. You check out seeds, you grow them, hopefully you're successful. And if you bring something back, great. If not, really the big idea is community engagement, community education. It's really fun when you see um, a family come, come in and there's six little ducklings going along, picking out their seeds for their garden. It's a lot of fun to watch that. But we uh, purchased some seeds and we have a lot of donated seeds for Master Gardener's Garden and we'll be packeting those up. We have three dates on the calendar. They are in the coneflower room at the library, which is on the second floor. It's not a public room, but they'll let us in for this party. From 6 to 9 p.m. on Thursday, February 24th, Tuesday, March 1st, and Thursday, March 3rd. And say those again. Yep. In the coneflower room, 6 to 9 p.m. on Thursday, February 24th, Tuesday, March 1st, and Thursday, March 3rd. And you don't have to stay, you won't get tied to a chair or anything for six or for three hours. If you have an hour to pack it seeds, great. If you have three hours, great. But and I don't, Catherine, she's not here. I, I believe that counts as volunteer hours, right? I'm sure. Or yes. yes. So any questions, um, call me or email me, Michelle Bohannon, uh, call, call Maggie, if you can get through to her, Maggie McKenzie, by phone or email. And if you can't find those people's phone numbers, you can always go on the LCMG Gardeners email, email me and I will tell you who to talk to. Sure. And we are in the, in the various directories, I think. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Okay. Barb, did you want to say anything about your? Oh, um, our committee will meet <laughs> in the next month. Okay. You want to name the committee for the, everybody? Oh, it was, it's the uh, uh, mini tours committee. Mini garden tours. Mini garden tours. And it has two parts. One is to take trips out of town. Uh, Usually it ends up being Colorado, uh, areas of nurseries and gardens. And then the other half of that is uh, touring each other's gardens. So that's what we'll be working on. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? Um, okay. Yeah. The, the people online are seeing the top of your head. I'm, I'm getting up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, your hair is blue and it's nice, but. Sorry. <laughs> it takes me a little while to get moving sometimes. I have a little bit of things going on. Okay. So, um, the next thing, um, I do we have a report about the Master Gardener, the Wyoming Master Gardener thing? Yes. The, uh, the meeting. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can do it. <laughs> I didn't bring my notes. 
That's like okay. ad lib. April's not here, so. So the conference is going to be Friday and Saturday, September 9th and 10th in Thermopolis. They do not have a price for it yet, but they are asking for silent auction items. Like I said, I don't bring my, I didn't bring my notes. There was another county that had something going on. Uh, I will send that to the top. So we will get that out. Meeting, the next yeah. meeting of the, this is the, and everybody knows this is the Wyoming Master Gardeners. The not, state, this is the, the state, state Wyoming Master Gardeners um, for the state of Wyoming. So, and they are gonna have some really cool workshops and speakers. And so they don't have all of them. They may have, we don't have it for sure yet, but I think Jenny Gordon is going to be the keynote speaker. Um, wow. I'm definitely planning on going up there, but we don't know again, how much it's gonna be. Um, Where is it gonna be? Chris, it's in Thermopolis. And Chris Hilbert has got money that he's gonna probably donate to that. Because because of his online thing, he doesn't have to print off all the books and, and ship them out. So he was going to be contributing something to the, the fund. And hopefully that will bring the price of the conference down a bit. And that's what I've got so far. Uh, I will bring more information to the next meeting from my notes. Okay. Um, Okay, again, <clears throat> I would like to point out that there are, that on the website, we list a lot of different committees. You've heard about some of them tonight. Um, several of the committees have the opportunity for volunteers uh, to participate in them. And even if you're an intern, you can, you need a lot of hours and you can get hours by um, trying to volunteer for the committee. Uh, one of the ones we didn't hear from tonight is the, um, the education committee, and I was I did speak with one of the uh, chairs, and she said that they are getting ready to become more active in schools and at the boys and girls club again clubs again. And so, if you are interested in participating in youth education at the boys and girls club or at the school level, you do need to have a um, security check then and that's pretty that's common for anybody who ever works with children uh, so if you are planning on volunteering for that please let me know and i will get you in touch with the powers that be for that committee and they can tell you how to uh, obtain that clearance so that you can be ready to go to to interact with other children with children for that um, also we do not have anybody in charge of adult education we don't have anybody in charge of hospitality, which to, again, hospitality, you can, there's, you don't have to spend your own money. We have money for this, but for, for drinks or snacks, for master gardener meetings, and also for Catherine's classes where they have the master gardener so that we can have a presence there so that they know about us. And when they are doing their new, their newbie stuff, that they will consider that this could be a fun group for them to continue to participate in. Um, the other one is we still don't have anybody to arrange the speaker series. I do have um, two, I have, a, I have both myself and um, Deb Mutter have ideas for somebody that we would like to have speak. Uh, that's two people. And it, this is something we already have money for. It's already budgeted. All we need is somebody to make the calls and arrange for accommodations and that type of thing for the speakers after they are approved. So I would really like somebody to step up to do that. We have people who've been in charge of this in the past that can mentor you if you're interested in doing that. Uh, we are a organization that is based on community education and education for children, adults, ourselves, and the community at large. So I think it's really important that we try to get some of this stuff going. COVID's, you know, starting, we've, we've settled into a new normal now. 
It may not be exactly like what it was before, but uh, it certainly is time to start getting to be more active in the community now. There's plenty of opportunities to do so. We just need some people to step up and take over a couple of positions. Um, okay, that was my pitch for committees again. Um, Hmm. Yes, please. Ask the Master Gardener. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Ask the Master Gardener. Yes. Um, we have right now, uh, Mike Heath has offered to handle the uh, Common Garden Show, I believe it is. Um, I have to, I'll look in my book and make sure that's right. We have several volunteers already for the Ask the Master Gardener Committee. I gave the list to Mike. But he's doing it out of the goodness of his heart because he doesn't want to see this, you know, go by the wayside. There's a lot of people interested in this. If you can, we've previously done the ran, the Ram Farm and Ranch show. We've had booths at the Home and Garden show. We do it at the, I believe, at the fair. There's um, at the farmers market. That, there's farmers market on a regular basis. There are all these opportunities and there's lots of volunteers for it. We just need somebody to coordinate it. And um, I appreciate that Mike step forward to do it for now, but that's, he's already the head of another committee and we really need somebody else to, and it, it's such an easy thing. All you have to do is call the people who already have volunteered and say, hey, which way, which thing can you go to? So it's really easy. And uh, hopefully somebody will step up for that. Um, does anybody have any new business or is there any old business I missed? I would love your report. I, I had one thing about the hospitality committee. Please. So when John and Susie Howard had the hospitality committee, they bought all sorts of stuff to support that. And so they've got a couple curds. They find their stuff in the local thrift stores, right? So they found a couple turrets and they've got all the, the pods for that, for the coffee and tea, and they've got the water for it, the jug. And it's on a rolling, you can put it on a rolling cart and move it from upstairs where it lives to the so they can have coffee and tea on it. And then they would, because um, there's a budget for the hospitality committee, they would combine scents. So we have like little fruit bowls or cookie middles or something. And then they also help with the main menu. And that's and that's huge because I normally just do that by myself. There's a long funny story to how they help with all of that. But they help with um, making sure that there's plates and silverware and cups and water and so the hospitality committee are all the committees that probably the easiest one to do. There's probably the one that has a lot more easy factor to it. It can be a little bit of fun. I'm just saying. It's, yeah, you could even store it here. You could even connect it with uh, different holidays and fun stuff. So I, I'm, I really hope that some of you on Zoom that have never volunteered for anything before might consider doing that. If you've ever been in the PTA or had kids at school where you did fun things for Valentine's Day and stuff, and now they don't let you bring anything apparently that's fun to school, but you can bring it to us. We'd love it. So, <laughs> so if you've done that before for school, you can do it for us too. It's really not difficult. Um, so please somebody, I'd really love to see somebody take that up. And Ask a Master Gardener is also very important. And now I'm going to turn over to Peggy to do our financial our man, our treasurer report. And uh, I want to express my gratitude to Sharon Guthridge um, for helping me. Um, we got together and I don't know, where's the camera? I'm going to replace this, which no one can print out or read unless they have a magnifying glass, and replace it with something like this for each month. So it can be printed. Um, it will run concurrently. 
And um, so I've got January and February that I'm going to go ahead and give to Angie and she can um, scan these into her minutes and everything will be there. Uh, I have got um, total budgeted funds. Again, this did not change from when we did our budget, $34,078. And um, our expended funds so far are $1,049.19, leaving our remaining budgeted funds to spend $33.28. See, I still have problems reading even this one. Um, our certificate of deposit is sitting at $37,997.15. That brings up another topic. Um, our bank balance is balanced to February at $31,181.13. Um, we actually we actually have total funds of $69,178.28. And that brings up what we were discussing and what we wanted to vote on today in regards to the certificate of deposit. The way it was explained to me by Becky, thank you very much for the historical help on that. Um, we have always had $8,000 in tied to the, tied to, that was supposedly what it is, it's our seed fund. It is our not seed library fund, but it is a seed fund in case everything like COVID, anything blows up completely, we will always have this amount of money in our certificate of deposit in a safe place that we can regenerate and have, you know, so we've got money to start with to start the plant sale, which is our major fundraiser, the the soil, um, the bare root sale, the, the rose sale, the bulb sale. So what was what was brought up was twenty thousand dollars and taking the rest of that money and and putting it taking that the rest of that money and turning it into our liquid fund and, and just keeping it at twenty thousand dollars. We can change that at any time. I can go into the bank and we can, it, it, it's not a set fixed time. I can go in at any point in time and do that. So I don't know if we have to have a motion to, to do that right now. Um, we really can't vote on anything at this meeting because it was not announced. We don't have a third of our uh, right. So what I would recommend is, um, well, first of all, know that in the proposed policies and procedures that we're proposing a twenty thousand dollar minimum. For and, the CD, for yeah, the and that's where that's where I read it at was in there. So I wasn't sure if that was an announcement or um, what. The, the membership will be voting on that in April. Okay. So, but in the meantime, the um, executive board should discuss this at their next meeting. And then, Which we would have um, discussed had we been able to have a well, meeting. Well, we're going to have to do it next time. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Next meeting. Okay, and next then meeting. if it requires uh, the membership to vote on it, it needs to be announced and then scheduled for the next meeting. All right. Any questions? No questions. Thank you. So, I do think that everybody should be aware that the executive board is discussing a lot of things that are going to require a vote in the future. So, please look for the emails and read them and be prepared as far as the general membership to vote on things in the next two or three meetings because they are going to come up. Um, and there are quite a few things on the agenda. Anybody have any new business? Does anybody have any announcements?
Okay, I think that's all we have for today. Um, Nancy is ready to host the program for us. Um, yeah, you need to take like a five minute break here. Well, I think we're going, I think we get to close the, the meeting now, right? The business portion of the meeting. So the business meeting now is closed as of 716. That's a gavel. And yeah, there we go. Thank you. Okay. And hopefully, we'll figure out our procedural issues by next meeting. <laughs> Yes, thank you.
and then ask the mask to the parser. I can intermittently. Yeah, all right. All right. And I don't mind sitting there. I feel like I bring all my books. So in the chat day, there's a really nice question. Yeah, you can find the passage back this year. She must have been doing
So white and native plant scavenger hunt. Um, one thing that we wanted to do as a group, as a committee, a lot of us are just learning and um, we're all sharing information. And this was an opportunity, a fun opportunity to get out and to kind of focus our attention on something specific. When you're first starting out, there's so many plants out there, it's such a distraction, it's hard to know where to start. So um, we take this as being a fun way to get out and start identifying the plants um, and have a purpose in mind. Um, the idea is to identify and document plant locations, also for sourcing eco um, type seed. Um, many of you know that we did um, a native plant or regionally native plant um, um, habitat at the library. And there were a lot of plants that we wanted to, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now, and that we wanted to use and we had growers but we had no way to source the seeds and some of them are very common seeds for our area but we had no seed source and so we couldn't get that and so um, this is a way to start documenting where plants are located so that we can source seeds for um, some ecotype um, gardening in the future um, we're also trying to create awareness of the local prairie diversity. And one of the things that um, people said at the Habitat Hero Conference was um, they had no idea how many blooming plants that there were in the prairie. They just had no idea. They're so aware of grasses and not so many um, uh, blooming plants. So to increase the awareness. And it's a chance to monitor the plant diversity by piggybacking on a historical plant record that's part of the Rocky Mountain Moss variant. Um, so the next one is to, um, so if you're not aware what the Rocky Mountain Herbarium is, it's part of the University of Wyoming, it's in the botany department. And um, this is really, really a great resource if you're into native plants. If you want to find them, if you want to um, locate them, learn about them, it's a really great resource. And um, the repository, oh, this is off of their homepage, is the largest collection of Wyoming and Rocky Mountain plants in the world and reflects the region's biological diversity and evolutionary history. So if you've never gone out to this website, you want to go out there and you want to play around on it because it's going to provide you with a lot of really interesting information. Um, so what we did was in searching through the herbarium, we found that in 1983, William Edwards collected 134 specimens from the Al Triple C campus. Yes. Um, Bill Edwards is somebody that we knew in the 90s. He was an uh, Al Triple C science teacher. Okay, and that makes sense. We've, we've been talking about, we, nobody quite knew who he was or why he did this. You can but, check and find out if he's still alive. Okay. He, he left Cheyenne when he retired. So. Yeah, because I he has collections on the herbarium up until around the early 1990s. So. Okay. Yeah. So um, he collected 134 specimens from the LCCC campus. And of those, 74 of them are native forbs. And those were the ones that we focused in on. He also collected grasses sedges. Um, he also collected um, non-natives or um, introduced species, but we just focused in on the 74 data forms. And so this is the website that you would go to if you're going out to the Rocky Mountain Herbaria. And so um, the next slide, this is the next slide that you're going to see are um, photo captures so that um, of online. So these are just photos of where we went to so that hopefully we wouldn't break down the system. Um, anything, anything that you see that's in a pink um, box, it's um, directions. It's the way that I form directions. So that, that would not appear actually on the homepage if you go there. Um, so what would happen is you would go out, this is your homepage for the Rocky Mountain Herbaria. And what you've done is if you go directly out and you're traveling along the top menu bar and you go to my directions, you'll go into collections, you'll receive a drop down menu, you'll go to Rocky Mountain Herbarium, it'll give you another menu, and you're going to go search for the Rocky Mountain database. 
And this is where it gets really fun and interesting. And this is the database. This is your page. And you can start filling in information. And um, what we did, um, if you're using, um, if you're looking for a very specific plant to find out if they collected it in Laramie County, you would put in the scientific name here, genus and species. You could then drop down and you put in Wyoming, Laramie County, search the specimens, and it will tell you if they've collected it in Laramie County. Now, just because they haven't collected it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Okay, but um, it'll give you an idea. Um, one of um, you can also do it by um, by collector name, one of the most interesting collectors to look under is Aiden Nelson. He was the first that started the Rocky Mountain Herbarium. And you'll see what plants he collected in Laramie County in the late 1890s, up until the 1920s. Um, it's really interesting to see what he collected right in front of the Capitol building. Um, so um, you can also um, even um, you can do it by um, Laramie County um, for a project that I'm doing. I have um, state of Wyoming, Laramie County. I need it within the elevation range. I need it between 5,500 and 6,500 feet. What plants they've collected in that area, and then I can do my search. So it's really a fun database to get into. Okay, so if you're not familiar with their herbarium, what they are is they are a repository of plants. So like you have the library, the repository of books. What they do is they actually dig up the plant specimen. And so they'll take a portion of the root and then the plant and they'll dry it and then they store it. So once you click in your information, in this case, we put in Edwards, Wyoming, Laramie County. This is where it gets a little tricky and I don't know why it does this. Um, we put in Laramie County community we put in community college, um, we only get 15 of the specimens. I don't know why. You kind of have to fiddle around with it. Sometimes it gets a little persnickety. But we do Laramie County community and then click search specimens. This is shrunk up. We come up with 134 specimens. We get a little red dot. Um, all of them were collected from one specific area or around one specific area. If you were doing a larger search in Laramie County, you might get a lot of little red dots um, for the different areas. And then you'll get a photo that'll start giving you information. So um, you can enlarge that photo to take a look. Um, it'll give you the information when it was collected. Um, you can actually, and I didn't realize this till today. Um, so where it says sort instead of scientific name, I could have sorted it by collection date. Um, which is important when we get further into the document. And I did not do that. So I spent hours sorting through, putting it in collection date order, and I could have just done a search. So, <laughs> um, like, really? So, um, but it'll give you the, that information and it'll allow you to do the search. So it tells me I have 134 that are in the matching record. And then, so it will show 134 of these different cards with the information on it. It'll also tell me the plant community. Um, in this case, since everything is shrunk up, you can't see it, but it tells me that um, the plant community is short grass prairie that's out here. Not all of that information is on every single specimen, um, but you can learn a lot about what might be uh, other plants. So this, um, when you go back, so I have a large map here. I'm able to zoom in on that map, and you do that with your mouse. You can zoom in and zoom out, and you can do that on most maps. And so by zooming in, I can now see that Laramie Community College is where I am. And if you look, the little red dot is out near where the pond is. You know, the natural area is by the pond. Um, so that's where most of the specimens were taken. And again, it gives my breakdown. So if I zoom in and I had my cursor, I could click on my red dot. And then it's going to tell me all the specimens that were collected from that red dot. So like I said, sometimes it'll show up as one big red dot. And then as you get closer, you'll see that it's actually seven or eight red dots that are tied together. Um, and so it'll break it down. It'll um, give me the year that it was collected or the time period. So sometimes in a single area, you might have a collection point that says from 1953, 1997, any kind in there. Um, it can be different plant species. 
by clicking on a plant, then it'll bring me back to the little card at the example where it shows me what the plant looks like, the roots, and so on. So I just click on a plant if I want to see a specific one. Right. So we took all of that information and we came up with our 74 species that were found on the community college campus in 1983. And that's what we started with. But Obviously, we want to try to see if they're still here on the campus. That's kind of our goal to get a historic record, see how it's changed. Um, but we're not able to dig them up. So we have to document somehow. Are they here? Do they exist? So now we're going to a different organization. That's iNaturalist. It's an app. iNaturalist.org. The gorgeous is have given me information. They use it when they go out and they are birding. They've also listed plants on there. Um, so you use your phone. And if you have the app on your phone, you can take a photo and it will upload everything on to um, if you're part of a project, which we will be. Um, for this, it'll upload it though, and it'll give you the coordinates of where you were, where the plant is. And now it uploads it so that everybody out there can see it. So now we have it's documented. And that helps for when you're looking for a seed. Yeah. Um you can do it on your phone, but what I find that's much easier is to take the plant photos and sometimes take more than one photo of that particular plant, maybe the group, maybe a single flower, maybe a close up of the head or the leaf. And yeah, you know, they have information on how to take right. photos. But if you upload these on your laptop when you get home, it's much easier to work with and you're not distracted and trying to do it on your phone when the sun is shining. You know how terrible that is. And you can also group photos together. So if you have one species and you take multiple photos, it's a lot easier to pull those photos together in one record. Yeah, I just find it a lot easier to work with. And I think that that's what, if you've not worked with it, I haven't, I pull it up on my computer. I work at it at home when I'm doing the search. But when we do the native plant committee, everybody pulls out their phones and starts <laughs> pulling and out. I'm like, really? And uh, yeah, and they'll say, well, what are we doing this one? Or are we doing that one? And um, so we go through it kind of on the steps. There's some people that are really good with their phones, really good. I'm not so much. So I am going, I'm probably going to take Barb's approach to it. And, and, and take the really fun part is you try to identify the plant. And also, iNaturalist now has a big enough database. They use artificial intelligence to try to tell you what you're seeing. And sometimes they're wrong, but they give you some ideas. And you can always say, well, yeah, maybe that's it. But then real people will come along and double check. And a lot of times they are actual botanists and people like that that are checking your identification. Um, and it's kind of fun when you get into, I took pictures of uh, you know, tumbleweed or something, you know, one of those exotics from Russia or, you know, Asia, whatever. I got somebody from, I don't know, Ukraine or Latvia or somewhere <laughs> identifying yeah, our Russian plant for us, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, and and for the Native Plant Committee over time, we'll go back in on other people and we'll try to make identifications as winter time goes on so that we hone our skills a little bit better at what we're looking at and what we're seeing and that kind of thing. So, so question, you mentioned the coordinates. I could see where if you're doing it while you're standing there in the field with your phone doing it, it's going to know where right. you are with GPS, but you, no, you, you set up your camera and your phone to identify where the photo is being taken. Oh. It's an option you have in your settings. Oh. And that information comes with the photo when you upload it on your computer and when okay. you send it into iNaturalist. And it's kind of cool because when we went through the snowies and I was taking pictures all along the trail, later I looked and here are the little miniature pictures all along the trail on the map. <laughs> No, it, it's really, it, it, they're both really great sources and it allows other people to see and it, it creates a public record. 
so that you, we can see how things are changing. Um, every year, you know, on the prairie, some things bloom, some things don't. Some things suddenly appear that you've never seen before, some things disappear. They're not necessarily gone, but for whatever reason, um, those conditions were right. And so it's it's a really great record. And the iNaturalist, it's a community science program. Um, the University of Wyoming uses it on some of their others. They have a program out that's called Monarchs and Milkweed. And they're using iNaturalist to help document monarchs and milkweed in the state of Wyoming and where it is. Um, so it's really a great program and it is a citizen science program. And it's great if you have kids too, to get them involved. Um, so on iNaturalist, um, we're actually again, piggybacking on, I'm a firm believer in not remaking the wheel. And so um, if you go out and this again is it from my computer. So it might look differently if you're on your phone, I'm looking at it, but I'm gonna go up to the menu and I'm gonna go to community and I'm gonna drop down to projects and I'm gonna click on projects. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a photo here. You might not get a fish. It's actually a slideshow that's running through here. I just picked the fish <laughs> because they had no plan. Um, and then there is, there will be a blank search box here. Okay, I plugged in El Triple C Campus, but it actually is blank when you start off. If you just pull in El Triple C, you'll get about six different projects. Um, they're involved in a lot of different projects. You want specifically, you want specifically El Triple C Campus. Okay, so Campus Project. And then it'll flip you to another page in your second page. It'll show up as there's one of one on your search. The L Triple C campus, you're going to click on that. I have my cursor, I click, and this is going to be now the home page for the L Triple C campus information. And the gentleman that loaded this up and set it all up for L Triple C, he um, is interested mostly in um, monarchs. So, a lot of there's more animals and fish. So, there's fish in the pond. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, there are. <laughs> and so the other people have listed a few plants, but not a lot. Um, most of them are within the garden. So they're planted here or dandelions or something like that. Not a lot of the natives yet are out there. So um, so we're going to piggyback on top of this, um, on this project. And he has El Triple C all diagrammed off, like I said, with the map. So um, it's all there. He's already done all the work. And so that is where we will load up to and, and piggyback off of that site. Um, so with the two sites put together, this is the list that it's actually three pages because we have 74 forms. Um, and what it does is they're numbered, scientific name, common name. We're entering another column that's between um, common name and flower and the vegetative state of it that will have um, a photo link. Um, because it's going to be on the website, we have to be careful about uploading photos that are not part of the digital um, comments. So there's a copyright on them and we don't want to get into trouble. So we're going to link out the best photos and that keeps us out of trouble. So not them infringing our copyright. So that there will be a link there. Um, so that if you have it on your phone or on the computer, you can go out to the link to see what these look like. Because you'll notice that um, number one is an astragalus. Then we have another astragalus, but they're different plants. Okay, and on this, there's I think six different um, species of astragalus. And I, you know, I'm not sure I would know the difference. Now, Wanda and Manly, who's part of the committee, is that we will be able to figure out the difference as we look at the flowers, but they also bloom at different times. Their phenology is a little bit different, but then the specimen collection. So this tells us when he saw them and collected them. So the first one star at 531. If you see a second day, it meant that he collected it twice. He collected two different specimens. It tells us that it's flowering and fruiting. So probably it's flowering and even a week or two before that time period. So if you're out there probably in the middle of May, you might see this one blooming. Okay. So it gives us an idea of what they are. Um, 
notes. Um, Wanda was very good to go through and give us all the synonyms for these plants. And you can see like on this one, how many times they changed back and forth. So if you're looking under certain um, historical documentation, and sometimes this will show up in the Rocky Mountain Herbarium, you'll be looking under one name and it's not showing it. And it says no specimen. And you're thinking, I know curly cup gumweed, I know is in Laramie County. There's no reason. Then you have to go out to synonyms because what they did was they loaded it onto the onto the platform at a time when it had a different name. And so that can get kind of confusing. But she was very good to list all that information for us. And she also listed some of the other more common names. And then we also have a column that you'll be able to write down a comment on that. Um, whatever your comment was, pretty flower. I might like to have this in my garden. I want to go back and collect seeds. Um, I can't tell the difference between these two. Um, whatever your comment is, I saw bumblebee on it, you know, or photos like that, anything that's like that. So you'll be able to go out and take your sheets with you and uh, hopefully look at the photos and then be able to identify them. And then we'll have documentation. These were the ones that were present in 1983. This is what we found this year um, that are still present on this site. You can also take these, most of these are fairly common um, species for around the area. So if you have a natural area behind your house and you wanna go out and see if there's any in there, you can go off of that time period about when they might be blooming. Chances are that's when they're blooming in this area and you can take a look, okay? Um, for those of you who are not, are somewhat technically challenged, like I can be, um, I will have photo pages. So these were um, plans I did go out and they are, I downloaded them on, but you will have to email me to get that. So if you don't like to use the links, you want to have a page that you can just look at before you go out, you need to email me so that we keep the organization out of not in trouble with the copyright law. Okay. So I have the pages all set up. There are some um, that we can't get a hold of, that all, all the photos are copyright and I can't download them. I mean, I can't, not because it's illegal, but because you can't do it. They just, um, they figured out how not to let it happen. Well, and if you go online, you can type these names and then lots of photos. Yeah, what you have to be careful of though, when you type them on, is not all of them are accurate. Um, and so you need to, when you're looking at them, when I went through and made the, um, when I collected the photos, I took them from the sites that I knew were probably fairly accurate um, and documented because they were documenting them for other um, websites, um, like for, in California and Eastern Colorado has one. Um, that they do native plants, they're very accurate. They have very good photos on there. Um, and so I picked those as opposed to one that they identified on Pinterest. I didn't, I stay That's away from those. Yeah. It's a bad place to find it. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but anyways, but it kind of gives you an idea on the variation, just, just on the simple ones that are, that are going through. And so, that's what you would be able to do is um, hopefully encourage you to go out. Um, we're gonna give you opportunities to do it. You can go out on your own. Let's say on a Saturday, you decide, hey, I'm gonna go for a walk out at El Chico see what's, the, what's going on in the natural area. You can see um, on the page where you're going back, you can see what might be blooming and see if you can identify those four or five plants when you're out and about. <clears throat> All right, so. Any questions on our, our scavenger hunt? Do you win anything? I don't know. <laughs> <They're the price. laughs> you are not the, the first person to ask to be like all summer. Because so, okay, so he did, his collections run for two months. He, when we get to the end of July, he has nothing left on the collection. Um, so we are running it for those two months. There's going to be plenty blooming out there, but we won't necessarily be able to connect it you'll have to start doing then your own research. But by that time, you may be pretty good at it and very comfortable at figuring out the different researches and, and the methods and that kind of thing. The other thing too, is if you get it up onto iNaturalist, 
Um, there are people that will go through iNaturalist will help you identify it. And then um, in the wintertime, that's one of our projects is to sit down kind of in groups and see if we can make the identification of the Laramie County native plants. Um, so his collection was for a two month period and he went out about every four or five days. Um, and we're going to have three times probably that we'll go out where we'll say, we're meeting on a Saturday morning or something, and then we'll kind of branch out because it's always fun to do this as a group. It gets kind of exciting. And um, it's really interesting when you're working with other people, their skill sets. Um, I work with some people that are really talented at seeing the differences in the plants um, that I don't see. Like um, I, I, artists tend to do this. They, they can see that difference, like that there's shading that's a little bit different or the color is slightly different on the underside than on the top side. Musicians, I, I, you also have a very good skill set of this. I don't know if it's from reading music or just, but, um, but they'll notice things that I, I just don't see. And so it's fun to be on with that, um, with a person that, that has that skill set. It's also fun to find those people that are really great with their phones like I said in, in the meeting, people are just like, really? <laughs> but they're very good. They're very, very good at finding the information. And uh, that's the goal I'm getting is like to find all 74 or 76 of the plants that we know were here at the The goal is to see if they are still here. And they may not. Just because they're not here this particular here year does not mean that they're not here. Like it might have not have been the best of years. Um, this last summer, um, this summer, um, um, they need dogs showed up everywhere. Oh my gosh, I had so many people emailing me with photos of they dogs saying, What is this plant? What is this plant? What is this plant? It was everywhere. I mean, it was amazing. And why this was the year for it, I'm not sure, but it was everywhere. Now we may not see that again. Um, Indian paintbrush was the same way on the west. Um, it was everywhere. And um, some conditions are just right. So the goal is to see how many of those plants that we can find um, of the 74 and then to redo it again. And then to do find stuff that wasn't there. That's fine. Add that in. Yeah. He didn't, just because he did not collect it does not mean it didn't exist. He may decided not to take in that particular sample. Um, of a plant, or he may not have been able to find a really good example. It was past its time or something, and so he decided not to collect it. It doesn't mean that it wasn't here necessarily. And so that's why you can put, you can add a blank page if you want to and keep filling out the information. Um, but primarily, we're trying to focus on the natives. Um, stay away from, I mean, you can do it if you want, but. Um, the introduced species, you know, it's not, it's trying to identify the name. Yeah. And so, so you can join in at any point in time if you want to, or not, if you don't want to, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, and we'll get more information out on the times that we're doing it, like as a group. And then I'll let you know when it's, um, the information is up on the website and you'll be able to download it. And at any point in time, you can email me and say, what, <laughs> what am I doing? What are we supposed to be doing? Or can you answer this question? Okay, all right. Um, there is one thing, um, we have to get permission and I need to meet with you on this. Um, so there seems to be some question, we were trying to figure out how we could um, mark certain plants if we wanted to go back to them to collect seeds. And it's a little unclear yet if we can flag them or not. Um, so I will also get back with information on that, um, what can be done, because part of that area is, um, I think the livestock, that Wanda thought that livestock would be off campus by that time, by the time we start. But anyway, we don't know. So we, we're not sure yet on the marking. We may only be able to um, identify it by um, the longitude latitude and then go back and try to find the plant after the fact. Um, the one interesting thing about that is, um, so one of the plants that we wanted to add into the library project was number 10, this violet. Um, 
it's yellow party violet. And um, Barb brought in some of um, the handouts that we had at um, the Habitat Hero Conference. Did you bring Jane Dorn? Is no. no. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm sorry. Sorry. sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, so um, Jane Dorn had also made a list for us through the Habitat Hero Conference, and that particular plant was on it. It's very common in this area. However, we could not source any seeds. We could not source seeds from anywhere. We went up to Canada, tried to source, we could not source seeds. Well, the violet, most people know that Asclepias or milky is the host plant for the monarch. Well, violets are the host plant for the fertility butterfly. And the fertility is, is in as much trouble as the monarchs are. And um, so that's why we wanted to include it. Um, but we couldn't, we couldn't source the seeds. And yet it's a, supposed to be a very common plant here um, in the prairie. And so we would like desperately to find some so that we will have a seed source in the future. Yeah. Yes, it's a very beautiful little yellow violet. Oh, it's on, it's on Catherine's place. And so if you have the area, <laughs> I know, I know, you would think, right. Why can we not find seed source? But at that point, it was a little too late. I mean, we couldn't go out and collect our own. So that was the idea behind this too. Um, it would be nice to have, to be able to locate and know where these plants are so that we could go back to them possibly in the future as a seed source um, for specific projects. And how could we do that in other areas? Like, remember, I was talking, we were talking about Indian paintbrush. Mm -hmm. How? Um, at the deck, there's, you know, between Cheyenne and Laramie, the, I was seeing a bunch left. How, how could I flag that, like, in the ditch or something? I think, well, you, you're somewhat limited. Um, you'd have to be, you have to be careful on what property you're on, first of all. You can't just enter onto um, private property, so you have to make sure that it's, like, in the barrel, in a public land area. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes what you have to do is you have to go back. You have to know what the plant looks like after it's bloomed and, and then go back and collect the seed. But can we do that? I mean, is there a way that we could like take the picture of it and have your longitude, have mm -hmm. your coordinates? And then can you? Yeah, so, so there's- Within GPS, you can find those coordinates? Yeah. Yes, but some of them, and I'm not sure on iNaturalist how close they are to the spot. Um, I'm, I have a meeting with um, somebody out of the conservation district. They use, I think it's called the Austin. You know this app? Oh, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's an app my brother-in-law uses for hunting. Right, so, so with an o, but, yeah, yeah Austin, I think is what it is. And that's actually a pay app. I think it's like $30 a year, but it gets it down to you're almost standing on the front. Um, some of them are not as quite as accurate, so you're a little distance away. And sometimes then you have to write down in your notes what might be close at hand to help you identify where you need to go to. Yeah, yeah or exactly. Or I stop off here at the mile marker mall and I'm going 10 steps in. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not the easiest, but I think Austin and I, I'm going to experiment with that one, so I'll let you know on that one if it how accurate it is. But I wonder if you could try using the spray paint stuff that they use for your yard that just washes away. Right, and that that's part of the problem. It depends on how far out it takes for the seeds to to before you can mm -hmm. collect them, because um, some of them the paint will be washed away before you can go back, mm -hmm. unless you can go back and continue to mark them. But some of them. Some plants don't seed until very late in the season. I mean, you have to wait quite a while, mm -hmm. whereas some, it's really fast. You've got to really be on top of them and, and monitoring it on what you're doing. So, Sandy, you have a question for uh -huh. So, Kara, says, you say you're going to put together a new instruction page for this project with all the steps. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will have an. Um, so the first page that'll be listed on um, when you when I tell you it's on the website, we will have an introductory page that will start get you started on the iNaturalist and that and all that part of it. 
and then um, that'll be your introductory page and then um, you'll be able to go out and then download the list um, and then at any point in time you can email me i am in the directory and you can reach out to me at any point in time along the way i am pretty good about responding quickly unless you're just out there right then in the panic state saying what do i do and um, so it's all good um so you should have a step-by-step um information on how to go about this and this is going, this is the first time we've done it so we're going to get we want feedback from you guys too to tell us hey i wish we would have had this or i wish we could have done that or next time can you can we try this um so it's all about feedback when my brother-in-law was talking about his gps he said i and then i realized that i oh and x oh and y Oh, and why okay. I, I like the jewel. Like I thought it was like the animal offset. Oh, uh, well, what I see here is O M X. O N Y is on X. Okay. Is that you? You're familiar with that? Yeah, I'm like Are you saying that again? O N X. Well, Ken says Ken says his son uses it. Yeah, I, he uses it for hunting also. I think it's O N Y X. O N Y X. Well, okay, I don't know what this other one is. I use Gaia. It's G A I A. Gaia. 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 Gaia.
and then the whole research pop would go from there. And um, we'll, we'll probably have, um, Andy, you gave me the um, key list that you used for your Colorado class. Mm -hmm. And I also bought a key book from that Robert Dorn put together. So at some point in time during this summertime, um, that will be one of the groups that I'll say we're going to come out and we're going to try to see if we can figure it out using the key book okay. on what we're doing. Um, because if you've ever used um, those, the key books, the one from Colorado is a little bit easier than Dorn's book. <laughs> that was really kind of hard. <laughs> but I'm hoping that it might not be so hard when you're actually out there. You know, when you're looking at a key book and you're not being able to look at the plans and ask the questions, it's like, what? You know, where do I go to from here? Um, so, but, so these are keys um, to help you move to identify the plant. But they're in their books, so um, so they're they're not always that simple. But that will be one of the things that we'll do on a group. And so we have a couple of key books to help us identify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And when you get a really tough one, we'll email it to Bob. Right. Yeah. And um and like I said, Lana says when I was looking at the various astragalus photographs. Um, there's one um, field fetch, which is it, it looks very different than the other. And I'm like, oh, okay, this one, <laughs> this one I can figure out. <laughs> but some of them, I think it's the location of where the flower is on the plant as much as anything. Some of them are tucked in and whereas others are at the end of mm -hmm. the stem. And I think that that's what makes the difference, which is not necessarily something you would notice um, always if you were looking at it, um, but that helps identify um, the species. So it'll be interesting. It'll be an interesting project. And like I said, um, at any point in time, you can do it on your own, even if it's on a Saturday and you decide you just need a little bit of a walk, but you want to focus in on this. Um, so the list will be available and we will answer questions and help guide along the way. Any other questions? No, just a comment from Rosalind. It says, William C. Edwards was one of the first biology instructors in El Triple C. He was also a state legislator for a month. That's good. Yeah. And yeah. he was a board member of the Audubon chapter. That's how we met. Yeah. Yeah, see, isn't that? It is interesting to see how people get in. And I'm not. Is that the other thing? Yeah, see, there's supposed to be there. So, um, yeah. So, if there aren't any questions, that's my entire presentation. It's like a water. Are you still with somebody? And thanks for joining us on Zoom. One person left. <laughs> That could be it. No, there's 17 people in here right now.